so yesterday we were uh, at this point now we have seen the conditions for t beam l beam then we have seen the introduction now we are uh, moving further <coughs> now we are moving further there are three types or three cases <coughs> of the t beam first is when neutral axis lies within the flange okay now this portion of t beam as you know this is called as flange the below portion is nothing but web so now when the neutral axis is lies in the flange okay so neutral axis means what the depth of neutral axis this depth this we call this as a xu okay and uh, this is nothing but depth of the flange from this point to up to the this point this is called as depth of the flange so this is df depth of the flange is df so neutral axis is within the flange means what the depth of the neutral axis that your xu depth of the neutral axis that is your xu is less than df okay this is your xu whenever it is less than df then neutral axis will be here when the value of xu is greater than df okay now suppose this is your t section Okay, this is your T section. This is your T section. When your XU value increases, now this is DF. This is DF. When your XU is greater than DF means what? You are starting to measure XU from this point and it is greater than DF hmm. means it will come uh, somewhere here okay somewhere here suppose x is there then at this point your neutral axis will be there here your neutral axis will be there this is the case when your x u is greater than df then in that case your neutral axis will be in web it is not in the flange okay so now here in the first case your x u that is the depth of neutral axis is less than the depth of flange df df is nothing but depth of the flange so i have shown the neutral axis here in the flange itself okay <coughs> so further when this is the case when x u is less than df then this is the stress distribution diagram which is shown over here it will act uh, same as a uh, singly reinforced section what we have studied in singly reinforced section okay so uh, how it will be so if i show you now i will draw here a t section this is flange then this is our web okay. and now if you draw the diagram distribution diagram it will be like this Uh, you mute the mic then whatever you speak it will be not listened over here hmm? so now and the diagram will be like this this will be the diagram uh, so the diagram is not too much perfect but uh, still i am trying to draw your and the reinforcement is placed over here in the t section so at this level here you will get the force this is your tu okay. at this level here your force is cu i will call this as a cuf okay the force in the flange as your neutral axis is lies in the flange so if i draw the neutral axis then the neutral axis will be 
somewhere here. Okay, this is my neutral axis. So this is the neutral axis. This is the neutral axis. Okay, so this uh, whatever I have shown over here, this should be end over here. Huh? This diagram must be like this here itself. Okay, at the neutral axis, it must end. Whatever uh, this is extra portion is there, you draw the diagram correctly. <coughs> now see, uh, this is the neutral axis and this depth, this we call this as a XU, depth of neutral axis. Okay. And this distance is nothing but, this is DF. This is nothing but DF. This is called as width of the flange. BF. You draw the diagram simultaneously with me. This is BF. And this width. It is called as BW. Width of V. <coughs> width of V. Okay. So now here. What is the tensile force? Force is nothing but stress into area. What is the stress in steel? It is 0.87 Fy. And what is the area of steel? AST is the area of steel. It is quite simple. You already know that. Here for the compression force, again the same thing is there. It is stress into area. Okay. Now stress into area. Stress, you know, it is 0.36 FCK is the stress. Now area. So here, you know, the maximum stress is 0.446 FCK. Okay. This is your maximum stress. As this level is below this maximum stress level somewhat here. So it is 0.36 FCK. So now, uh, what is the area? So if I hatch the area over here uh, with a light color and light shading. If I hatch the area over here, this is the area. If I, this area we need to consider. This is the area where the compressive force in the flange is acting. This is the area. Okay. Now how we are going to take this area? What will be the area now? 0.36 FCK is the stress. Area, area is nothing but this is BF. And this dimension is XU as you see over here. This dimension is XU. So your area will be BF into XU. So 0.92 BF into XU. This is your area. Okay. And this force is again acting at a distance. You know the distance. This distance is from this point to this point here. This is 0.42 XU. This distance is already known to you. Okay. And what is your effective depth? Your effective depth is from this point. If I draw here D. Then your effective depth will be from here to this point okay so this will be your effective depth this is your effective depth and whatever the distance between these two points now if you see whatever the distance between these two points here, these two forces, this is nothing but your lever arm. This is your ZU. Okay. So as this is the compression force in flange only, so I will call this as a ZUF. Only the notation is changed. Nothing will be changed. Okay. And what is the lever arm? If this is T, this is 0.42 XU, then this will be D minus 0.42 XU. This is your lever arm. Okay. So, diagram is complete. We will move to the next part then.
is it over if you have done with the diagram we will move to the next part let me know it is over or not hmm let me know have you completed okay so i got the reply as yes so we will move to the next part so again we will go to our slides so here now if you see the <coughs> next part <coughs> okay <coughs> so the formula is here we have already seen here those formulas are written uh, if you see uh, <coughs> 0.36 fck bf into xu it is for cu and point eighty seven F one to A S T four T U and the lever arm is D minus point forty two X <coughs> and these things are <coughs> and uh, these things are already uh, known to us when X is less than X max under reinforced and over reinforced sections balance sections we already gone through this now the next part is. when the neutral axis lies out, outside the flange okay now when the depth of neutral axis is increases that is xu increases than df depth of flange okay it lies in the web now this is your neutral axis this is nothing but neutral axis okay now it is in the web it is not in the flange so now when it is <coughs> in the web then you can see that over here in the stress distribution diagram the tension tensile force will remain same but in the compression force two forces are exist first is the compression force due to web okay compressive force due to web and second is the compressive force due to flange so first force is due to this web and second is due to the flange okay and we will see uh, how these forces are coming and so here you can see that tu it is as usual what what will be the value of tu tu is nothing but it is 0.87 fy is the stress into ast is the area stress into area you will get this force as a tu now cuw so cuw is the compressive force in web so this compressive force is again for stress into area so it is 0.36 fck bw into xu that is the stress into area and uh, this cuf cuf is also again stress into area so it will be 0.446 fck uh, this is the stress because this force is like Uh, uh, acting at this point the uh, distance is d of by 2 so it is very near to this point 0.4 uh, uh, fck so your stress is 0.446 fck and uh, the area will be bf minus bw into df so i will show you how this comes and then we will uh, discuss on this okay so you see here this is the point 42 x so point 43 x means just below this somewhere here at this curve Okay, and this is nearly equal to at this curve, point forty three xu, because this is your point forty two xu uh, below that curve here, where the parabola starts exactly at that point. Okay, so we will see this diagram now. I will draw this so that you will get understood. Our T section. so this is your neutral axis <coughs> this is neutral axis okay now i will complete this diagram first <coughs> so we are going to show here the stress distribution
and now the diagram will be like this so this is our stress distribution diagram if the steel is placed over here in the t beam at the bottom of the t beam then here your <coughs> then at this point somewhere your tensile force will be there here somewhere tensile force is there here at this point your compressive force in web so up to this point this is normal <coughs> this you have already studied this will be your tu and you call this as a cu okay tu and cu what we have seen earlier okay now what will happen when this now if you observe this t section this is your bf uh, width of flange this is your bw width of web and this is your df depth of flange okay and this total distance is xu if i write over here from this point up to this below point this total distance is xu okay now what is our condition now our condition is xu is greater than df okay xu is greater than df and df is less than and df is less than or equal to 0.43 xu okay so as you know that as you know this is your 0.42 xu up to this point from here up to the compressive force 0.42 xu so just first of all analyze uh, like a normal thing oh, what is happening over here just we will see and after that we will uh, interpret this now what will be the tu tu is the tensile force so as usual force is equal to stress into area so i will write over here the stress it is 0.87 fy is my stress into area this is nothing but area area of steel ast so multiply this by ast this is my formula for t okay. now for cu again c is equal to as you are see this force is far more away from the maximum stress that is 0.446 fck here it is no longer in the straight line uh, region it is just on the boundary okay so the maximum stress over here in this cu is 0.36 fck this is the maximum stress now into area <coughs> now what is happening here you see that whenever the neutral axis is goes into the web now this web is acting as a single section now if i draw the rectangle this section this section will act as a single section okay this section whatever i have shown in yellow this section will act as a web okay this whole section will act as a web this only not only the section below the web uh, below the flange is act as a web this whole section will act as a web okay and the remaining section whatever the remaining section is there that that is uh, uh, acting as a flange so if this whole section is acting as a web now what will be the area i am interested in the area i want the area so if i show you the area with hatching lines so area above the neutral axis is this much area if i hatch it this area we need to consider this area Okay. and what is this area this width this width is bw okay width of web and this distance is xu so your area will be area will be 0.36 fck then it is bw into xu 
okay and as this compressive force is for the web i will give you the notation c u w okay i will give you the notation to this force is c u w so compressive force in web so the compressive force in web is nothing but it is again stress into area there is no uh, way to by heart it you just remember this this c u w is equal to 0.36 you just remember understood the concept then there will be no need to buy at the formula so c u f w is nothing but the compressive force in web how do i calculate the force any force we can calculate it as stress into area so i know the stress it is 0.36 fck as it is acting over here into area so in this case now uh, whatever i have shown in this yellow this is your web this portion will act as a web okay this whole portion is act as a web so area is nothing but above the neutral axis i should consider because it is the compressive force so above the neutral axis the area i have have shown in hatching by green color so that area is nothing but it is bw is the width of this section and xu is the depth of the section okay so it will be bw into xu hope you understood this now this is for web now still one more thing is remaining that is this thing and this is called as flange okay so this all this is for the web this is for web now one thing is still remaining and this is called as flange so there will be the additional compressive force due to this flange this flange is nothing but it is a slab and web is nothing but it is a beam okay so additional compressive force will be there and if you draw this the that compressive force the, before going to that compressive force uh, i will tell you the what we can say lever arm distance also so what is the lever arm distance so the distance between these two forces here if i draw the line so this is the distance okay so uh, if i draw the line over here okay so this is nothing but your z u1 and this is d minus 0.42 x u so i will call this as a z u w because this is for web okay and i will write over here your z u w is equal to what it is d minus 0.42 x u okay now the another force now the another force that is due to the flange this will act at this level okay, at this level this force side and we call this as the compressive force in flange okay compressive force in flange okay now what is the lever arm for this force if you see mm, this distance this is nothing but it is df upon 2 this is nothing but it is df upon 2 where df is the distance so this cuf force it is acting at this center a okay, center here somewhere okay center of the flange it is acting at the center of the flange okay if you see so if this total is df then this will be df by 2 df means what depth of the flange okay so from this up to this point the df is there now up to this point. so here up to this point the df is there so this will be df by 2 okay so now cuf if i want to calculate the value of cuf how should i calculate the value again the formula is to same stress into area so what is stress now it is now point again it is very near to 0.446 here so it will be 0.446 fck is my stress into area now what is the remaining area now if you go to the diagram you will see that this total distance is bf okay this total distance is nothing but it is bf now what will be the area out of this total distance this area is already get consumed into web so if i hash the remaining area okay if i hash the remaining area that with the black color now see 
this is the remaining area whatever I am hatching over here with the black this is the area of the flange now how to calculate this area now see if this total is BF and this much from this point to this point here this distance is BW has a total ya point pasun ya point parent b of a cell and he may width of flange and ya point pasun ya point parent bw width of web a the rahila kai he don't he don't mean rahila kai so the width will be b of minus bw so in this case now width what will be the width so that width is nothing but it is b of minus bw this is the width of the section okay in this case this is the width of the section now if i write over here pointed pck so what will be the width it is b of minus bw is the width of the section and <clears throat> what is the depth area i want area now so just i have got now width and what is the depth depth is nothing but this much is the depth so depth is equal to what df so multiply this by df so this is again stress into area this is also stress into area now if you again take the lever arm what will be the lever arm hey, if I choose the different color for the lever arm showing the lever arm here so this is nothing but the lever arm ok and now I will call this as a ZUF lever arm of compressive force in flange from tensile force and if I write here ZUF then what is the value of ZUF it is D minus DF by 2 okay. because you know that up to this point the distance is D ok so now if I show you here from this point here from this point to here up to this point okay. this is nothing but your effective depth this is nothing but your effective depth D ok so this is nothing but your effective depth D and this is 0.42 XU so first lever arm is D minus 0.42 XU second is now this total distance and this lever arm it is nothing but what is this if this is D of by 2 then this total is D so this total D minus D of by 2 you will get this lever arm okay now all the forces and lever arms are written over here you copy down this <coughs> you copy down this and after the you copy you let me know it is over or not so we will go to the further after you complete this let me know sir ha uh, sir uh, if uh, df is greater than 0.43 x see uh, nah, then that case settings. coming the next see when your df is less than 0.43 x you know the stresses in the flange is uniform okay when your this df this df 
is less than this 0.43 xu now just uh, next level the st whatever the stresses compressive stresses are generating in the flange the at this end these stresses are uniform so you can directly use this formula for that whenever your df is greater than 0.43 xu that is this level is greater now then in that case these stresses are not uniform in that case you need to assume a constant term it is called as yf and through that yf uh, we are going to calculate the forces we will see that in the next case okay uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. The only difference is that that is not, there is no much more difference. See, X is greater than DF means although the neutral axis is uh, not in the flange, just the, the difference for this DF is less than 0.43 X and DF is greater than 0.43 X. What does this indicate? If your DF is less than 0.43 X, then you can say that the compressive stresses which are generated over here in the flange are uniform. And if your DF is greater than 0.43 XU, then these the compression stresses which are produced over here, those are not uniform. Okay. So to calculate that, uh, we need to assume some constant. So we will see that. Hmm. In between, if you get disconnected, please join again. Today also the net connection is not so good, but uh, I think are you able to hear me properly today? So no, just the here today the thing is that you are not responding me fast, not replying me fast. Hmm? okay so this is our second case whatever uh, shown here so here the same thing is given okay other just now what we have seen here you can see that this is the effective depth of the beam this is the depth of the flange this is the depth of the uh, width of the flange that is bf this is depth of the flange df this is the depth of the neutral axis xu and this is the diagram so when your df is less than or equal to 0.43 xu although in the diagram it is not looking like that your df is less than 0.43 xu but still you understood this this is uh, <coughs> okay so now here here now again if you see tu cuw and cuf the extra forces see, see the cu and tu are the same thing which we have studied earlier also the extra thing is that the compressive force in flange okay that you need to understood over here here all the formulas are given and also i have written over here this you can see when df is less than 0.43 xu when df is less than 0.43 xu the stress in the flange is uniform okay so i have written you just see these things the stress then the flange is uniform okay the t beam can be treated as a rectangular beam of <coughs> the width bw and depth d now see this t beam is we can treat this beam as a suppose now i will draw here beam so this is my flange portion this is flange portion and suppose now i will show you here the web this is my web portion so now what will happen 
uh, I can consider this web as okay, this web as now here somewhere the in the web here the reinforcement is provided somewhere okay so it can be considered as this is the section this width is BW and from top I can consider this this can be considered as the effective depth D okay so this one section I can consider this is for web this is for web and this one section I can consider this is for web and second thing what we have done over here this now this total width is BF this total is BF but this section is acting like this here here if you see this section will be like this so this is your web this total section is nothing your web this total will be act as a web so what will remain here here the width of section is nothing but it is bf minus bw for this rectangle it is bf minus bw and what is the depth it is df is the depth okay so if i calculate the area this will be the area of the section it is bf minus bw into df that is whatever is written over here area this is nothing but area okay and now in this case now see as you know we consider the area up to the depth of neutral axis now suppose the neutral axis is passing through the web suppose the neutral axis is passing here from this point so this will be is nothing but your x u from the top okay as we are considering this from the top so your area will be whatever this height portion is there that will be your area Okay, so it will be BW into XU. So here the same thing is written BW into XU. This is nothing but again area. Stress into area is nothing but force. Okay, and you know that this is AST means what? Area of steel. Here it is AST is present. AST is area of steel. Okay, so in this way now uh, the forces are evaluated. And one more thing if I show you in the figure, if I show you where the CUF is exactly acting then that force is acting over here somewhere this force is acting here okay so what was uh, i am showing i am showing that for this where the exactly this cuf is acting now if i draw this flange so this is your flange okay then this is your df this is df and this area is nothing is this is with bf minus bw that i have actually told you already how to how that comes and now if you see the force the force will be acting from this end to this end somewhere here and this force is nothing but your cuf okay and now if this total is uh, df then this will be here this distance is nothing but it is df by 2 it is acting at the center this cuf is acting at the center if this is your flange this is nothing but this is flange so this uh, cuf is acting at the center so what that is what it is shown you here and this is the distance df by 2 okay so same thing is given in the slide also now moving to the next point Now if we move further Zati kada bhar Ah Babu ne na mila Ah Sarak ki
okay so now this is the now this is the next slide okay here uh, how to calculate the mu that is given so if you assume balance section and if you equate, equate the total compressive forces to the total tensile forces then what do you what you will get cuw that is compressive force in web this cu is comprising of two things the total compressive force is nothing but compressive force in web plus compressive force in flange and the tensile force is as it is tu so compressive force in web it is 0.36 fck bw into xc okay. so the compressive force in the web is uh, you know 0.36 fck bw into xc and uh, here for the cuf uh, CUF is 0.446 FCK BF into BW. 0.446 FCK BF into BW. Okay. So now, if you write those two values over here, and it is equal to TU 0.87 FY AST. So this is this equation you will get. This is the equation what you will get over here. Okay. This is the equation. So you just remember how the values of these forces are come so that there is no need to buy at the formula. Okay. Similarly, here if you see mu is equal to mu w plus mu f. So mu is the total moment. It is equal to moment in web plus moment in flange. So moment is nothing but again force into area. So total moment mu is equal to muw that is cuw that is force in the force in what we can say web into its lever arm plus here again muf means what cuf into d minus df by 2 is the lever arm this is the lever arm and cuf is the compressive force now if you put the values of this force you will get this equation okay I hope uh, this this is clear to you. So this is the second equation what we we got over here. This is the second equation. Okay. <coughs> so shall we move forward? Now we will move to the third case. Yeah, huh? now see the difference. What is the difference and why it is done? Now we will move to the third case. Third case is again same. X is greater than DF. Means against the neutral axis is lies in the web only. From this it is clear that. But what they have given uh, ahead. In the previous case it was less than 0.43 XU. Now here the DF is greater than 0.43 XU. Now the depth of the flange is greater than this thing 0.43 xu. Then what will happen? Whatever the portion of this flange is there, okay, below this 0.43 xu, the stress distribution is not uniform in that level. And this theory is applied for the uniform stresses. As you know, force is equal to stress into area. This equation he remains hold or this equation holds good when your increase or decrease in the stress is either it is uniform or the stress level is maintained uniform. Okay, so now you see that when you are uh, this uh, DF is greater than 0.43 XU, the sum part of the flange is not in the uniform stress. Okay, so up to 0.43 xu the stresses are uniform. So up to 0.43 xu the level where in the flange the stresses are uniform. We assume some level. Now see, this is my depth of the flange. What I want to tell you, this is my depth of the flange. So now at this point somewhere here the stresses are not uniform. But then what will I do? I will think that up to this a certain depth yf, up to this certain depth, well, let it be the depth is yf instead of df. Now yf is the depth. Up to this the depth yf, my stresses are uniform. 
why i am considering uniform stresses for further analysis part unless and until i consider stresses as uniform i cannot go further okay so from this df that is depth of flange what what i can do that up to a certain part of this uh, flange i may say that the stresses are uniform and beyond that part the stresses are not uniform okay uh, so the very simple thing is there in the so instead of df now i am taking yf and what is the value of that yf here that value is also given so this yf can be calculated as how we can calculate it 0.15 xu plus 0.65 df okay 0.15 xu plus 0.65 df in that way the yf is calculated now in this formula in above formula now in this formula see here in this formula if you replace df by yf replace df by yf okay then you will get the formula for this thing the same thing is there here you can see the stress distribution diagram this is 0.4 fck this is cuf this is cuw okay the df is greater liver arm are written so the formula is same cuw is equal to 0.36 fck bw into xu this you know that okay this will act as this whole section okay this is for your web and then cuf in the flange the compressive force in the flange it is 0.446 fck bf minus bw so bf minus bw now your area will be the area will be <coughs> this area instead of uh, df here what we will get yf replace your uh, uh, df by yf okay and this compressive force will act at y of by 2 so we will consider yf is the depth of the slab now not df is the depth of the slab okay we will consider yf as our new depth of the slab because up to the this level of yf we say that our stresses are uniform okay so now we will if we go for the diagram now if i show you the diagram again so i will draw here a t section okay sorry i forgot to unmute so now this is the t section whatever i have drawn this is the t section now this is your bf width of flange oh this diagram is very small i will draw another one so now here it is my t section is there okay so this is t section now this is d of depth of flange this is d of this total is df this is bf width of flange this is bw width of web. now if i draw the stress distribution diagram so here this is the line so as we uh, know that what is our condition now our condition is xu is greater than df so neutral axis is in web and what df is greater than or equal to 0.43 xu so df is greater so this level is much more okay this level is much more so if i draw the neutral axis now so i will consider in the neutral axis somewhere here this is the level of neutral axis okay so i will consider my neutral axis somewhere here this is my neutral axis 
Now if I draw the further lines for the die completion of the diagram. So DF is greater than 0.43 XU that I will show here. So now if we will draw it like this. Okay, now uh, the forces I will show here. So the tensile force will act. Tensile force will act somewhere here. So the tensile force, the compressive force in the web will act somewhere here. This is the compressive force in the web. Okay, and if I write, so now it is again and again getting disconnected from my side. Now I will directly show you the stress distribution diagram. What is the diagram? What we get over here? So the diagram will be like this. It is now I will draw the freehand sketch with uh, it will be like this. Okay, so here you will get your here you will get the force Cu here somewhere the Tu is there and at this point here your Cuf is there so if I write the names here it is Tu here it is CUW, here it is CUF, and now if you see the T section, this should be greater. Somewhere else, up to this point, I will keep it. Okay, so. This is the T section diagram, and I will. If you show the reinforcement, the reinforcement will, will be shown here somewhere at this level where the TU is drawn. Now, this total is DF. This total is DF. So, I am assuming that now up to this level YF. Now, I am assuming that now up to this level YF. Okay, up to this level Y of the stresses in the slab are uniform. Okay, the, the stresses are not uniform in this uh, flange for whole depth DF. For whole depth DF, it is not uniform as our case is XU is greater than DF and DF is now greater than or equal to 0.43 XU. When DF exceeds this 0.43 XU, the stresses in the all the parts of this flange are not uniform. So we cannot analyze it directly as the stresses are not uniform stresses. So what we will uh, assume that up to the certain depth or what we will take up to a certain depth of YF up to this point, the stresses in this uh, flange are uniform. Okay, up to this point, the stresses are in uh, in this flange are uniform. Okay, that is what uh, we consider and based on this, this theory uh, assumption we can take the formula t u is equal to 0.87 fy into ast is the formula is same then c u is equal to as you know previously this total section will act as a single section okay and now i will not draw it once again whole diagram so this total section will act as a single section you know this is bw and if you draw the neutral axis then the neutral axis will be somewhere at this position here. This is the position of neutral axis. Okay. So now uh, what do you get from here? This is your XU. Here it is XU. Depth of neutral axis. So what will be the area? So this will be the area. It is BW into XU. So it is 0.36 FCK. BW into XU. Okay. Next, uh, what is the thing? 
next is the uh, this cuf so what is the value of this cuf cuf is equal to this maximum stress is 0.446 fck so it will be 0.446 fck this is the stress into area now see what is the area this is the important part so the area will be i will show here the area by hatching uh, with the different color so i will take green and now what is the area so this may be my area this is the area which i should consider this is the area this area i should consider over here up to the yf because up to the yf the stresses are uniform this area so what will be this uh, so from this point to this point this is your bw okay and total this is your bf so my remaining width will be bf minus bw and my depth is yf so it will be bf minus bw is my width and depth is yf okay and then this yf can be calculated as yf is equal to it is 0.15 xu plus 0.65 df this is the formula for yf is code specifies this okay so you can call your uh, calculate your yf in this way and this force over here which is acting now this is not acting at a distance of uh, d of by 2 it is acting at a distance of this is yf by 2 it is acting at a distance of yf by 2 and now if you show the see the lever arm okay so if you see the lever arm for this now see here is one thing okay. so the lever arm is what is the lever arm it is d minus y of pi 2 okay and this we called as a cuf and what is the thing for this force what is the lever arm the lever arm is d minus 0.42 x this is the lever arm okay this is the lever arm d minus 0.42 x so in this way when the neutral axis is there in the flange but when the neutral axis is there in the flange but okay so in this way we can see the how to calculate at the depth and uh, we have seen the formulas to calculate the moment of the t section okay uh, similar thing is with the l section only just there is a flange at one side same formula is there nothing will change for the l section also same thing is there only the width of flange changes here the width of flange is greater in the case of T section in the case of L section it will be like this only okay so there is no difference for while designing the T section or L section the only the difference is in the depth of the flange so here again the formulas are shown over here once you go through the formulas quickly so CUW CUW is nothing but this the force compressive force in web it is calculated as a 0.36 fck bw into xu then cuf cuf is the compressive force here in the flange but here you remember this thing huh? this is very important what is the difference between earlier case and this case 
now if i draw here this is my flange okay so this is my total depth df depth of the flange okay. but the, the stresses are not uniform for whole depth so what what i have done over here i have considered now you consider a certain depth up to this point my stresses in the slab are uniform and that depth is yf this certain depth is nothing but yf okay this is my yf so now if this is yf this is yf so up to this point my stresses are uniform i will show you the level up to this point okay so now the compressive force which is acting that compressive force is acting at the center of this so if i show you with the arrow so that will be acting in this way here here it will act okay at the center of this area if i show you the area again then this will be the area this will be the area okay and it is acting at what is the distance now so if this total is yf now so this will be this distance is nothing but it is y f by if we are not we have not considered this area into the account because the stresses are not uniform over here okay this is not considered so now you see that what is the difference when this is what when x u is greater than or equal to 0.43 x u this is the case okay and x u is less than 0.43 x u the case is normal you have to consider the total depth as a df because the stresses in the flange is uniform that is the only difference you need to consider for these things okay and then accordingly the formula changes so now uh, for next point so the next point is this so again the formulas are written over here and now we will quickly go through one numerical so that you will understand how to solve the problem and next problem we will solve on the whiteboard okay so i hope you will co copy down the problem so shall i dictate you the problem now will you take down the problem and you tell me when yes, the sir. huh yes okay so write down a t beam a t beam has a flange width a t beam has a flange width one thousand five hundred mm A T beam has a flange width 1,500 mm. An effective depth of an effective depth of 400 mm. So at an effective depth of at an effective depth of 400 mm the slab thickness is 100 mm the slab thickness is 100 mm and the breadth of the web is 230 mm breadth of the web is 230 mm the beam is reinforced the breadth of the web is 230 mm full stop 
the beam is reinforced on tension side the beam is reinforced on tension side with the total steel area with the total steel area 2000 mm square the area 2000 mm square using lsm using lsm calculate using lsm calculate limiting moment of resistance using lsm calculate limiting moment of resistance if m15 concrete if m15 concrete and mild steel is used and mild steel is used so now as we go through the problem uh, we have written over here the given data okay what is the given data the width of flange is given to you okay it is 1500 mm then effective depth is given to you 400 mm depth of flange is given to you the thickness here you can see the word here the sentence they have given you the slab thickness is 100 mm if you see this sentence okay. the slab thickness is 100 mm means what df is given to you as 100 mm the value of df is 100 mm the breadth of the web is 230 mm so bw is also given to you bw is 230 mm the beam is reinforced on the tension side with total steel area 2000 mm square so on the reinforcement is provided on the tension side and the value of ast is also given to you okay the value of ast is also given to you so now what they have further uh, tells you using lsm calculate the limiting moment of resistance if m15 concrete and mild steel is used so here ast is given as 2000 mm square fck is 15 fy is 250 why it is 250 as mild steel is there okay any mu limiting aplyala kadaycha a moment of resistance limiting moment of resistance okay so the given section is the t section so if i draw the diagram of this t section over here in this uh, we are we, we were drawing the i section now sorry t section so this is the t section where you can see that this dimension is 1500 this uh, depth is 100 okay then uh, this width mm, it is given as 230 so this is given as 230 here the reinforcement is placed and the effective depth up to this point it is given as 400 
from this point this is the basic information they have given you about the section okay so this is your bf is 1500 this is nothing but your bw this is your bf this is your df these things are given to you in the problem okay now we will start with the normal assumption that here if you see first we have assumed assuming neutral axis lies within the flange so the first assumption is this neutral axis this neutral axis is where it is lying it is lying within the flange that is we have assumed this is our assumption this is not the perfect thing okay this is assumed so what does it indicate if the neutral axis is in the flange that means that your xu is less than df where xu is the depth of neutral axis so when your xu is less than df then if you equate cu equal to tu if i equate cu equal to tu what is the formula for cu formula for cu is 0.36 fck bf into xu because now this will behave as a uh, singly reinforced section rectangular section and 0.87 fy ast okay. if i equate this from this i will get the value of xu and what is that value we got from this point here this value is this much x u is equal to 53.70 mm okay now for f250 calculate the x u max okay calculate the x u max x u max uh, if you can calculate x u max afterwards also first of all after the calculation of x u you check that your x u is less than d f or greater than d f okay so as uh, i have got the value of x u what is the value of x u it is 53.70 mm okay so 53.70 mm and what is my d f d f is 100 mm so here x u is less than d f so this condition is satisfied over here x this condition is satisfied over here hence our assumption is correct hence the assumption is correct okay now after this you can see that the section whether the section is under reinforced or over reinforced now for fe250 x u max is equal to 0.53 d this is for x u max so which is equal to 0.53 into 400 that value works out to be it is 212 mm this 212 mm so now if you see that your x u is also less than x u max so your section is under reinforced section so for under reinforced section you know that mu is equal to tu into z t into z so it is 0.87 fy st d minus 0.42 x u okay so it will be 164.18 kilo newton meter so your final answer is this is your final answer your final answer so this is 164.18 kilo newton meter and this is the value of m so this is our first problem what we have seen so you write down this problem copy down the steps all the steps and let me know after completion बदाम नो
कम्प्लीट की सांगा हैव यू रिटर्न द प्रॉब्लम ओके सो for today now up to this point i think it is sufficient now we have gone through all the three cases then we have solved one numerical also based on this okay so now tomorrow in the last lecture i have told you that we are going to take the surprise test or mcq test okay so you be prepared for the mcq test based on all these chapters also you be in the preparation of the uh, units what we are uh, uh, what are taught to you so these four units our third units are uh, third units are already completed we have completed that now fourth unit is going on so you should be uh, in a what, what we can say you should be in a position that any time if the surprise test Uh, is announced you should be in a position to give the surprise test okay uh, for some instructions i want to tell you uh, my voice is clear to all of you now uh, i want to tell you the important thing for the mcq test we are going to uh, use one app and the name of that app is kahoot k a h o o o t go to play store and install this app into your mobile or take this uh, go to the or if you are attending the lecture from the laptop then at that time while uh, do using this app you can tell me through in uh, your zoom uh, lecture that you are using laptop i will tell you how to use this app so uh, most of the students all of you are i think you are using the mobile for the lecture so today itself go to play store and install that app kahoot k a h o o t okay and we will take our mcq test by using this this app okay so in the next lecture next consecutive lecture i think tomorrow is the tuesday tomorrow the lecture may not be there on wednesday's lecture all of you should be with this app okay i think you are clear with this so this app i will uh, write the name over here so if you see k a h double o t okay this is the quiz app you can play here quiz or anything okay so for mcq we are going to use this app in the next lecture okay uh, today i have what why i have not taken the test because i have not told you in the last lecture about this app to install this app so it will be very benef- uh, good for us to conduct the test on this automatically everything will be there who is participated in the quiz who is not participating in the quiz so those who will not give the answer uh, their attendance will not be marked in the Lecture it automatically shows me how many students are uh, writing the answer, who, whose answer is correct, whose answer is wrong. In that way, we will take the test on this app MCQ app. Okay. Uh, so with this, now we will end today's lecture. I think uh, Sagar is there. Sagar, take the snapshot or of the attendance of the participants. Okay, and all of you, uh, let us type your roll number in the chat box fast. Okay. Uh, Sagar, you send me that uh, screenshot on my uh, WhatsApp number. Huh? Okay. Uh, all of you, please also drop your roll number into the chat so that it will get saved. बॉक्स में टैक लेगा। ओके, टेक द स्क्रीनशॉट। ओके, आई विल वेट। सागर, इफ यू आर डन विद द स्क्रीनशॉट, लेट मी नो।
ओके चेक करा एकदा सगळे व्यवस्थित स्क्रीनशॉट घ्या फॉर्टी सिक्स पार्टिसिपंट आर देअर राईट नाव वर अटेंडिंग द लेक्चर किंवा तुमच्याकडे असलेलं कुणी मिस होऊ नये व्यवस्थित घ्या फक्त ओके अँड नाव सेंड दॅट स्क्रीनशॉट टू मी ऑन माय व्हॉट्सअप नंबर अँड ऑल्सो एव्हरी वन हॅज गिवन देअर रोल नंबर इन द चॅट बॉक्स ऑल्सो सो वी आर हॅव्हिंग डबल कन्फर्मेशन ओके नाव विथ दिस नोट आय थिंक यू आर व्हेरी क्लिअर नाव यू इन्स्टॉल दॅट ॲप इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ओके सो वी विल टेक द वॉट वी कॅन से नेक्स्ट क्विज राऊंड ऑन दॅट का होत आहे एनीबडी इज हॅव्हिंग एनी प्रॉब्लेम रोल नंबर फॉर्टी टू हॅव यू रेज द हँड ओके आय थिंक नो बडी इज हॅव्हिंग प्रॉब्लेम सो टुडे वी विल एंड ओव्हर इयर सो सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर